If you want to tangle with fickle, hard to hook trout, you need to be pulling soft plastic grubs. If you want to get into grub trolling, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and grab one of Kel Kellogg's signature series grub kits today and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Yeah. I knew if I got something to eat, I'd hook up. <laughs> it's still 80 feet away, though. I'm all paranoid. I, I don't usually stack lines. Of course, I've been fishing in a kayak for two years, so there's not a lot of stacking going on. But the, the last release, I snagged the other line and ended up losing the fish. So this one feels like he's free. So. You know, obviously, it's not a red hot bite this morning, and that's one of the times when the soft plastics, you know, really excel because it feels real, it looks real, they nip at it, fools them pretty well. 25 feet out here. Yeah, that was on one of my grubs. A nice rainbow. Yeah, baby. All right. Nice rainbow for the smoker, and he jumped all over that firecracker grub. That's awesome. Howdy, folks. Cal Kellogg here. The Cookie Monster is back on the channel. Now, here at FHS, we love monsters. We love Godzilla. We love King Kong, but we love the Cookie Monster most of all because, you know, he loves cookies, but I'm not here to talk about cookies or the Cookie Monster really today. Um, I'm here to talk about grubs, and more specifically, grub hooks. A guy reached out to us after we ran that, uh, that grub video this week with that big Shasta rainbow on there, asking, what kind of hooks do we use when we fish grubs? And you know, that can be as simple as you want it to be, or it can be a little more complicated. On the simple side, if you take a two or three inch grub, like one of the grubs I offer in my kit, pin it on a hook, troll it naked, troll it behind flashers, troll it behind a dodger, keep it in that one to two mile an hour range, you're gonna catch trout and you're gonna catch kings on it. But just like anything else, Details matter, and there are some things that you can do that are very simple that will make you all the more effective out on the water. And those little details, they translate to extra fish throughout the season, and uh, who doesn't want extra fish? So let's start out. Let me, let me just you know, show you a few things about grubs. I just got them you know, on a pool floaty here, um, just so they're not getting tangled up. But let's start off with the basics of, uh, of grub rigging. Now these were actually the, the grubs I was running up at, uh, up at Lake Shasta. This is the one I caught that big rainbow on. What you want to do when you rig a grub, you notice the grub is on the hook pretty straight. It's not gobbed up or glommed up. This is 10 pound test fluorocarbon line and I got it rigged behind a set of the Max Lure Hot Wings. This could be a Dodger. There could be nothing here at all. This could just be running off a trolling swivel. You need a trolling swivel because these things are gonna roll, okay? And it will tangle your line if you don't use that good quality trolling swivel. But anyway, back to the grub. Notice the grub is on there nice and straight. And what this is rigged on, it's just rigged on a standard owner ring-eyed number six hook. It's a very sharp hook. And uh, I've got the grub on there nice and straight. And whenever you rig a grub, whether you're putting it on a hook for trout and king fishing, or you're putting it on a jig head for bass fishing or casting for trout, you always want the tail of the grub in the opposite direction from the hook. Now, it's that tail that makes the grub spin. And to my eye, it always looks kind of silly. I mean, it's off balance and that makes it spin. Now you could troll a grub on a light jig head, it wouldn't spin at all, but in reality, that spinning, that helps attract trout because it's putting out more flash, more vibration in the water, and uh, whoa, a little breeze here. And uh, took my pool floaty away. And they like it just fine. They don't mind that spin. So let's take a look at a couple different hooks and then I'll give you a, a really hot tip. So conventional you know, wisdom says you rig a grub on a hook like this. This is a very light wire, long shank, ring-eyed hook. It's, it's very light wire. I think that's a number one finesse worm hook. I think that's a gamagatsu right there. When you put a, a grub on a hook like this, it's going to spin very quickly, even at low speeds, even at one mile an hour, that grub is going to rotate very quickly. Now, 
if you want to troll faster, I've never seen anyone else other than me do this, but if you want to troll faster, and so you want to you know, slow the spin down, so you're going to get a decent amount of spin at a higher speed, say two miles an hour, go ahead and rig your grub on a hook like this. That is an owner heavy wire live bait hook. That's the kind of hook you'd use for albacore fishing. It's small, it's extremely sharp, but it's heavier wire. Heavier wire, slower spin, you control it faster without just spinning at hyper speed. And it's still small enough for a trout to get in his mouth. And obviously you're not going to lose many trout on that. That is an expensive hook, but you're not going to lose them. You're rigging them on 10 pound line. So that will slow the spin. That's going to work well. And all my grubs, I should talk about that. I connect the hook with a Pelomar knot on all of them. All the same, Pelomar knot, very reliable, very easy to tie, very strong knot. But let's get into the real finesse of this. Now, I'm going to show you some footage and then I'm going to show you how I'm achieving what you're seeing on the screen. Watch this. I filmed this at Shasta. Now look at that pink grub behind the flashers. I know I've cut away here. You're not seeing me anymore. But look at that. Look at that back and forth side to side action. You see that? Okay, now we're going to cut back to me. This action here, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. That's a lot like a Zara spook walking on top of the water that you'd use for stripers or, or largemouth bass or whatever. That walking bait action, that left, right, left, right, left, right. Well, it doesn't only trigger strikes on top water for bass species. It also triggers strikes from trout and salmon. There's something in fish that just predatory fish that makes them want to just freight train an offering that is going left, right, left, right, left, right. So how do you make a grub do that? I stumbled on this a long time ago. I was messing around with, uh, with octopus hooks, you know, the kind that have the eye that bends away from the shank. I would get a very pronounced action with too much action. I would shove that, that bent part of the octopus hook inside the grub. It would make the nose of the grub elevate and I would get a lot of crazy action. Sometimes that's good. By all means, give it a try. But here's what I'm doing now. I am taking a light wire owner live bait hook, just like this one. I just showed you this one. Just like this one. This one's right out of the package. Let me take the grub off here altogether. If you look at that hook, that shank is nice and straight. It's a ring eye hook. It's light wire. Very strong, very sharp. Now to make that back and forth walk the dog action, that that's the grub you saw, you know, walking back and forth. Take a look at this hook. Let me slide this off here. You know, you're gonna notice it's very subtle. Do you see that upward bend right there? You see where that hook just kind of kind of takes a slight uphill bend? I bent that in there myself. I bent it in there with a pliers. Um, Take your time, mess with it. You'll figure out how much bend you want to use to achieve that action. Now, let me put the grub back on here and I'll show you why it does that. Should go right back in the same, same hole pretty much. So this should be pretty easy. Right there like that. Okay, now, let me shove this bad boy on the hook. Look at that grub, look close. You see how the nose of that grub is elevated just a hair? That's what causes that back and forth action. It's a very subtle bend in the hook, but it makes a big difference in your presentation. So I hope you're able to employ that. Let me show you that in a slow motion right here. Watch this thing. Tell me this doesn't look like money, especially behind those Max Lure UV hot wing flashers. So check it out. You can see it back and forth, back and forth. It's still rotating, but it's back and forth. That is just a deadly, a deadly presentation. I strongly encourage you to mess around with that a little bit. That is gonna put extra fish in the boat for you. That's how I rig my grubs. I don't script on the hooks when it comes to grubs. I use Eagle Claw Laser Sharps, they're fine, but I often reach for the Gamagatsus and the owners. I want a really sharp hook. I want a high quality hook. And uh, once again, grubs, they are a great big fish presentation. They're a numbers presentation. They catch rainbows. They catch browns occasionally. They catch kings. It's just a great, uh, it's just a great offering.